Hey, what's going on? Guys, XP here with a quick cold and dark startup tutorial on the iFly 737 MAX 8. Well anticipated airplane, but hey, look at all these buttons. Look at all these screens. How do I get this airplane up and running as quick as possible for flights and purpose? Let's go. I'll show you how to do it right now. Let's go. So come down here to the uh, captain seat. You're sitting here. A couple of things you're going to want to do. You can do it in a couple of different ways. What I like to do is start up the EM EFB because we're going to end up getting power to this airplane. To get power, you go to the system page. You go to sim menu here at the bottom and you go to ground support. And this will show you what's on. You have the nose, wheel, chocks, and the right and left gear chocks. But what you want to do is go to the electric page, hit connect. That will connect the ground power on the electric page you want to set that and once that's done you're going to come up here in the overhead and you're going to notice you have this light right here that is for your ground power it says ground power available but that's not how you're going to start it you're going to go to the battery switch and i love how this switch works all you have to do is hit the switch to on by scroll wheel and the cover will automatically cover for you you don't need to hit the cover separately come down here to the emergency lights same thing so you come here, you put the emergency light into the armed position, which is in the center, and it will cover for you. That's it. And then once that's done, that's on battery, but the airplane is not ready yet. It's only going to run on battery power for so long before it starts beefing at you, beeping at you. So what you need to do is initiate the ground power by clicking down on the switch to the on position. That now changes and makes all your screens light up, including your two FMC, the left side and the right side. So that's just getting started. Now you need to align the airplane with the uh, IRS system. Come up to the top up here, and you're going to have uh, two knobs up here at the top for you to do it. You're going to move it over to nav mode, not align mode. You're going to go for uh, the left side and right side over to the nav mode. It says on DC align, on DC align, and that's going to be aligning. And if you flip the switch right here all the way to the end, it will show you how long it's going to take to align. It says seven minutes or less it's going to take to align. That That's if you're in the real mode and depending on where in the world you are. You can also change how fast it's going to align for you. If You're going to go to systems page. You're going to go to sim menu. You're going to go to um, panel style. You're going to go to other systems. And right is here where you have the alignment time, how you, long you want to take the alignment to do. We're going to go ahead and click instant. Whatever you check it to be, you have to set it. You always have to set it in this plane. So it's set. So that now will align your IRS on an instant time. And so that is going to come up and align there for you shortly. So once that's being done for the alignment happening, you want to come down to the FMC. And you want to hit the FMC button, puts you into the first screen, the index page. You want to go to position initialization. Position it. You're going to want to type in the airport that you're located at. Right now, we're in Montego Bay, Jamaica. So it's going to be NKJS, Montego Bay. You're going to copy the GPS position here and paste it into the set IRS position right here. Once you copy that, you go to your route page and you're going to see already is in the scratch pad for Montego Bay. And then you want to put in your destination, which is going to be KMIA. That is Miami International. We're going to activate that and execute it. And that's how you put in departure. And that's how you put in your destination airport. Uh, you're going to move to page two. And this is where you start to put in your waypoints for your flight plan. Or you can import them from SimBrief. I'm going to show you how to import that from SimBrief. If you can look right now, you see that the IRS is aligned. The way you know it's aligned is because your primary flight display and your navigation display is now showing the heading and different uh, information like that on it. Also, your standby instrument is ready to go. So that's how you start it up from cold and dark. Also, you want to go ahead and turn on the APU to get bleed pressure, not only to start the engines, but you want to make your passengers comfortable by turning on the APU and the AC unit. You want to turn on the AC in the airplane, which is the PAX. So you're going to come down here, you're going to scroll once to the on position, then you're going to scroll and hold it. One, two, three, for start. And that's going to go ahead and start up the APU for you. It will take a few minutes while the APU gets spooled up on the outside for it to start up. But I'm not sure exactly how long it takes, uh, maybe three, three minutes at the most. And you'll hear the sounds coming up outside with the APU running. 
And then once it's started, you'll go back in the inside. I'll show you how to connect the APU and so that you don't need the ground power anymore and also how to turn on the AC unit, which is the packs of the airplane for air conditioning and for bleed to start the engine then for pressurization. So that is coming up here. Once you jump back inside, you can go over here to the electrical bus panel, I'm gonna call it, the generator bus panel. Right now, uh, once the APU is available, you will come to here, you'll see a blue light, and it's gonna show you APU is available for you to turn on the APU and get the airplane on its own power versus being on ground power right now. So ground power is on, you're on the ground power, once the APU is available, there it is. The light just went green. It says APU Gen. You're going to go the uh, left side and the right side. Now the aircraft is on um, APU Gen. You can now disconnect the ground power and you're good. But you're going to also want to come over here and turn on the APU Bleed. There is the Bleed uh, panel right there. And then you want to go slide this to the Auto position from the Off position. And you can now hear the AC running in the airplane. You can select your temperature for the cabin. And there's a lot more here that you can do with the pressurization panel. But that's just the basic of getting that started up. Here is where you also would put in your altitude where you're going to be going for this flight. How far are you going to go? And this shows you once the aircraft takes off, the pressurization is happening. So that's how you get it on its own power. You can then come back here, uh, go to the menu, go to the uh, system page, go back a button here. And you're going to go to the ground support and now you're going to disconnect the electric power and set that so now the electric power is off this light is um, off which is basically the ground power is off and but it's already on uh, APU generator we we'll call it APU gen and APU bleed that is how you get that powered up uh, we're going to go into the uh, FMC real quickly and show you how you can import your flight plan into the aircraft through SimBrief, it's got a SimBrief integration that you could use. And the uh, SimBrief integration is pretty good on this airplane to do that. Now, for the SimBrief integration where you could use it to help pull up your charts or to load it into the airplane, you're going to go to menu again, system page. You're going to go to sim menu. And you're going to go over here to ACARS. So you're going to find your SimBrief ID and type it into this spot, whatever your SimBrief ID is. And then when you're done, you're going to execute that. And then that will allow you to import your flight plan into the airplane directly into the FMC. To pull up your flight plan in the FMC, if you go back to index and you go back to the positive position page, you can go to route and you can go to request flight plan. Flight plan request, now it's all laid out. So the request is in, it's working on it, the airplane is thinking about it, and then it's gonna come back and allow you to load the flight plan right here. It says route one uplink is ready. This is after you have gone into SimBrief, created your flight and your flight plan, and then once you put in your uh, SimBrief ID in the EFB, then you can go here and load it in. And you hit the load button, there it is, it's loading, and then that is going to now generate the flight plan in the airplane it's good uh, I always love to hit the activate button and if you go over to the route page you could see that it already has the route in here for you which is literally only a couple of waypoints two pages of route on this right you could go to the route page or the legs page and you'll see your waypoints then all you have to come over here and do is put in your departure you're going to do the Axle 3 departure, runway 07. You're going to execute that. And then for your arrival into Miami, you're going to go to the arrival. We're going to take runway 09, the Duval 3 arrival, and no transition. Execute that. And now you have your flight plan in. You can then go through your flight plan and see if you have any discontinuity. And if you want to run through your flight plan from the legs page, you can do that from here when you go through stepping through. But that is your basic cold and dark for setting up the 737 MAX 8 from iFly. Very simple to do, not a, a hard process whatsoever. And now you're ready to put in your fuel, your load, and all that good stuff. Now, if you wanna put in your weight and balance, that's a different thing here that you could do. You can come to the menu options again. You're gonna to go to performance this time. 
And that prompt performance is nothing in the airplane, but you can hit the weight and balance. And here it will allow you to put in everything that you need to put in. There's a, a, a detailed way of putting it in, or there is a simple step. What I like to do with passengers, I just type the total passenger amount, 162. That's going to be do it for me. And it will break it down to a different class for you. I go ahead and set this as Microsoft payload and hit done. That's good for the airplane. I go to the fuel. I'll treat the fuel the same way. I go to total fuel. Uh, we're looking at uh, 13,000 pounds of fuel in this for us, for this flight. We're going to set Microsoft fluid layer. Um, and we're going to do set the payload. And if you come over here, you could double check that you have 13,000 pounds of fuel. There it is. That is in. And then you can now look at your zero fuel weight based on your flight plan to see if that's correct. Then you can go ahead and add some cargo if you'd like on the cargo page. If you desire to add 2,000 pounds of cargo here, 2,000 pounds in the back as well. And that's it. Now your total zero fuel weight is 134.9. Uh, the last step you have to do after you set payload is to complete that. Once you complete it, it takes you back to the performance page for the takeoff. Here on the performance page, you could type in everything that you need, or you can ask to copy that from the FMC because you already set up the FMC. So copy FMC data, gives you the airport, gives you the runway, gives you the condition, gives you the weather, uh, everything that you need also gives you your total weight. So all you have to come over here and do is the takeoff or takeoff one or two performance. The flap config generally on the 737 is flap five. Uh, do you want to have the air condition on for takeoff? Yes. Uh, do you want to have anti-ice on or off? I do off. And once that's all done, you'll get to calculate, but you hit the calculate right there and it calculates everything for you. It shows you your trim setting. It shows you your V1, V2, and VR speeds. Also shows you your uh, select temperature for engine D-rate. So let's say it says my trim is 5.3. We want to come over here and move our trim up to about 5.3-ish. <laughs> that's what you're going to get. You also want to go to the init page here and go to the performance. For the zero fuel weight, all you have to do is just click it. It will auto-populate for yourself. Whatever your reserve fuel is, I put 2.0 is my reserved. That's it. Um, you can fill out the cruise winds on here or you can leave it alone, but I have the transition at 17,000. We'll go ahead and skip to the other page. Now select outside air temperature. You get it right here which is 43 degrees Celsius. So you're going to head and put 43 degrees right here. You're going to put 43 degrees right here for you. And that is all set. There's your D rate. Are you going to go to flat five takeoff, which is typical? The CG we already did 5.3 on the trim. There it is. That's already set. And then the V speeds, it says it was going to be uh, 36, 38 and 49. We already have it 36, 37 and 49, one different degree off. You are all set to go. Aircraft is ready to go here. A uh, few more things you would need to do is turn on your flight directors one and two. Make sure that if you're the pilot flying, your flight director comes on first. You can arm your LNAV and your VNAV. You could set your heading for the runway heading you need it to be. You could set your initial altitude and also select your V2 speed or V2 plus 15 or whatever the options you want to go. But that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is how you set up the airplane from cold and dark to get ready to push back and go. I mean, there's a lot more things to do what to, to be able to start to push back, like turning on your fuel pumps, so forth, coming over here, setting your, uh, your anti-collision and your position lights, go ahead and turning on lead pressure uh, for the electric uh, hydraulics, I should say, go on ahead and turn on your window heats. So there's a lot more, but this just gives you a quick startup of how you go from cold and dark to have the aircraft running and ready to go in Microsoft Flight Sim for the iFly 737 MAX. Hope this helps. It's just a quick start guide. There's a lot more involved. Stay tuned for more tutorials on this airplane. I'll see you guys again in another one. Take care. XP out. See you later. Bye.